Uh, welcome to the fifth common session of Synoikis' Digital Classics 2017. Today we have uh, our uh, second session about tree banking and specifically about uh, querying tree banking. And today our guest is Giuseppe Celano, uh, who is a research fellow at the University of Leipzig. Um, Giuseppe has been contributing to Synoikis' uh, Digital Classics since the beginning. And uh, today, He's going to talk about uh, well, query tree banks, and we have an introduction to XML, XQuery, and XPath. Giuseppe, welcome, and thank you for your <laughs> common session today. Thank you, Monica. Thank you for the invitation. I'm ready. If I uh, can start, I would start. Yes, you can start, and we, we see your slides. Thank you. Um, OK, um, in this lecture, I'll try to uh, introduce some uh, core concepts of uh, XML and uh, XQuery and uh, XPath. Um, I won't assume any prior knowledge, uh, so I proceed to trying to focus on the very basics uh, and try to actually show notions uh, in practice, which is, uh, in my opinion, very important. Um, the goal, the ultimate goal, is to uh, get you uh, started with these uh, technologies uh, so that you can uh, um, hopefully start working with your documents uh, uh, independently. Um, XML is a highly standardized markup language uh, which provides us with a technology to annotate our documents uh, in a clear and uh, intuitive way. I say uh, standardized because we uh, we have uh, um, open a worldwide web consortium specification uh, uh, clearly define what XML is. Uh, you should not read uh, uh, this documentation uh, um, um, uh, right now or uh, at this stage, uh, of course. Uh, they are very technical, but it, it's important to point this out. So when uh, uh, later, maybe um, when you um, feel more familiar uh, with all of this, you can always uh, um, uh, get back to, uh, to these documents and uh, uh, deepen your knowledge of XML or uh, XQuery XPath. Um, I want also to notice that XML is a widespread uh, format. Um, for example, we have uh, the text encoding initiative, uh, for example, which is uh, uh, ubiquitous uh, in the age. So it's important to uh, be able to understand XML and to query it. Fully mastering XML requires uh, undoubtedly some time and practice, uh, uh, but the basic logic of XML is uh, quite simple to understand and to learn. For example, um, if you consider, um, I hope that, can you see my, yeah, oops. Yes, yes, we can see your screen. Okay. Yes. Maybe if you can enlarge it a bit, you can read if it's possible. I'm trying to do that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, so here um, we, we have a text uh, more precise. Can you enlarge it a little bit more? That's still illegible on YouTube. Is it still illegible? Are you sh because I can see it very well. Yeah, in, in the Hangout, it's fine, but on YouTube, that, that's too small still. Oh, okay. Um, now, now on YouTube is fine, at least for me, I think. Uh, now I can read it also on YouTube. Gabby, do you think it's still legible? Unfortunately, the screen is YouTube, YouTube is smaller. So. Um, I can see it very well. I mean, not only, I mean, I, I can see you, I'm seeing you in a uh, hangout, and I can read uh, very well the... It works, it works, just it works. Okay, so um, in this case, we have um, a simple uh, TI text, uh, um, and uh, we have the, uh, we have Plato's definitions. Um, each 
elements. Um, so here you can uh, easily distinguish uh, um, uh, some uh, square brackets uh, with uh, some text uh, like title, editor, author, sponsor, for example. And this, uh, um, these elements uh, uh, work as a kind of label with respect to the content between uh, the two tags. Uh, we could say that uh, these labels uh, um, somehow describe the text uh, content uh, between, uh, uh, between the tags. For example, the title, this is the title element, we call it technically a title element, um, and definiciones is the content of, uh, uh, of a title. Um, so, and uh, it's pretty clear, I think, to understand that, that uh, the element title is a kind of describing the definiciones. Definiciones is the title, okay, of the work uh, which has been encoded uh, in, this, uh, in this file. Uh, we can read here sponsor, for example, and uh, uh, it's the same. So Harvard College Library, for example, uh, is the sponsor. Uh, here is identified as the sponsor. Uh, Plato is the uh, is the author. Okay, um, so um, and if we for a second focus on the actual syntax, uh, you can also see that each element has uh, an opening tag. Again, title here um, and a closing tag. We have a forward slash when we have at the beginning of the tag when the tag is a closing uh, tag. Um, elements can um, also have um, what we call attributes, okay? For example, if we go to line 121, here we have the type attribute whose content specifies further the text content of the element. For example, um, we understand, we immediately understand, it, even if we don't know the text uh, uh, very well, we understand that this is uh, the content of this note element is actually a note, and the attribute uh, helps us uh, um, uh, understand that this is uh, uh, a footnote. So it's not a generic note, it's uh, a footnote, okay? Um, but what if we didn't have this uh, X XML structure? Because it's important to realize. Uh, um, so again, even if you cannot read, uh, it's not important right now. Um, the point here is that um, so on the right, the text on the right does not contain anything helping us to identify the single pieces of information the entire text that consists of. For instance, where does the Greek text start? Or what's the role of, uh, I read here, Harvard College Library, okay? Um, it's not very, very clear. We should read the document uh, carefully. But if we look back at the excellent text, then the answers are pretty clear. Uh, because we can say that here, this is where the text starts. We have a text, an actual text element. And we also clearly understand that, that for example, Harvard College Library here figures as the publisher okay, of, of this uh, text. To sum up, the XML structure is of great help to identify and describe one given text or to put this uh, otherwise, uh, XML is an efficient way to add metadata to data. And uh, this structure is not only useful to humans who happen to read uh, the file, but it is especially useful to retrieve uh, for information retrieval in, uh, in an automated way. Um, I'll show this uh, very soon, but as you may already guess, uh, this elements represent the formal architecture allowing a computer to easily identify and distinguish between all of these text uh, contents, um, the text contents which have different meanings. Okay. Um,
getting back to um, uh, wait a second, I. Second, I there is a problem with um, Um, so the um, XML document can be described, uh, can be represented, it can be thought of as a, as a tree. Um, this is, again, um, important. Um, I have here an other XML document, uh, and again, uh, here the structure should be um, a little bit more clear, I think. Uh, uh, this document contains a linguistic analysis of an English sentence, um, analysis of which has been automatically performed by the Stanford parser. It's not relevant right now to talk about the linguistic details of such analysis, but we should again focus on the, on the XML structure. Um, here we have um, a root element at the very beginning of, uh, of the document, which is the outermost uh, element of, of the document. And please uh, um, disregard, uh, disregard the, 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 the two lines uh, at the beginning, um, where we have uh, um, starting with a square bracket and a question mark, because uh, now they are not relevant. Uh, it's sufficient to say that we to delay them without the well formedness of the document being affected. Okay, um, so the the root element, which happens here to be actually um, named root, is the uh, most external element, and it contains uh, all other elements within the document. You can see here that root uh, root here is the opening tag. And if we go at the very end of the document, we see the closing tag, as you can um, clearly see from the um, forward slash at the beginning of the tag. Um, so the root element uh, contains um, other elements, and this is why we, um, uh, we speak of a tree structure. The root element contains a document element, the document element contains a sentences element and so on. The token element, for example, contains a, a word element, a lemma element, a part of speech here um, element and, uh, um, and so on. The token element has also an, an ID um, attribute here. Okay. Um, what is uh, extremely important is that the relationships uh, between these nodes could also be described as uh, kinship uh, relationships. Um, so, um, if I... Okay. So, here we have um, a diagram uh, showing the oops, showing the uh, the structure of the document that I have uh, um, that I have presented. Okay, um, so um, we could describe this relationship in terms of um, in terms of kinship relationship. For example, the node. Uh, the root element here, okay, do you remember it's the outermost element, can be said to be a child of the document node. The document node represents the simply the entire document, okay? So, the, uh, but the uh, outermost element within the file is the root element. And this root element is a child of the document element. 
Similarly, the document element, uh, again, is a child of the root element. Um, so again, uh, um, the, we have the root element, the document element here, this is the child of root. The sentences is again a child of document, okay? Sentences here is a child of the document element and again, and, and so on. Sentence is a child of sentences. Um, we don't actually say that the attributes are uh, children of their elements, okay? This is something um, pertaining to the data model. This is a, um, a technical, technical detail. We simply say that the attribute have a special relationship with their elements, but we don't actually call the attributes uh, children of their, of their elements. And what is also extremely interesting then is to focus on the uh, text contained in, in a node. For example, the word element in the XML file contain uh, the word you, okay? So the word you um, is, is a text node, is actually a text node. And again, we say that the text node is a child of the word uh, element. Um, and going on, we could say that the uh, lemma node, for example, is a sibling of the word uh, element, and the um, lemma element has the same parent of the word element, okay? So um, it seems to be, it should be, um, I would say, I, I'd say intuitive to understand these kinds of relationships, uh, which are extremely uh, important when you try to query an XML document, okay? Um, but now, in order to see such concepts uh, in action, I need to introduce, uh, to say something about XQuery and uh, um, XPath. Um, this um, these are the kingship uh, relationships uh, I have just introduced, and now I uh, and then I will try to um, when I um, when I code I will try to explain uh, them better. Um, so um, I first need to to give you a very very brief introduction of XQuery and uh, uh, XPath because this isn't necessary for uh, some um, contextualization. Um, XQuery is a powerful programming language uh, which uh, uh, at first uh, uh, arose as simply the query language for XML documents but has uh, then evolved uh, into a fully fledged programming language. This is particularly true in the BaseX implementation, which amazingly extends the uh, World Wide Web consortium specifications. Um, moreover, BaseX, uh, okay, BaseX is the implementation, is an actual version, I would say, um, of the uh, of XQuery, presents, offers, uh, um, um, its own uh, version of XQuery. Uh, and it is um, it is really um, one of the most updated uh, implementations. Uh, uh, for example, uh, they uh, they implement XQuery 3.1, which is not yet uh, a recommendation. For example, so uh, it's really um, an extremely um, useful useful uh, processor. Uh, considering uh, XQuery just as a query language for XML is one of the most uh, common errors uh, uh, on the part of beginners. Um, in this lecture, I can only focus on, on how to start working with XML documents, uh, but I really encourage all of you to go further and deepen your knowledge of, of XQuery because you can handle any kind of uh, any kind of document, including binary data. You can build a web application, um, uh, execute system commands, uh, and really um, much more. Um, but um, other than that, um, XQuery is, in my experience, uh, easy to learn. 
and this is uh, especially true if you compare uh, it to other mainstream programming languages. Um, okay, um, the uh, easiness, I, I'd say, the easiness of use is also showed by the uh, installation, because uh, what you simply need to do is to go to the uh, web, to the BaseX website, okay, you have the link on, on GitHub, uh, then you simply go on the download section, you download the actual file here, uh, which is the core package, which is enough um, for now. You download it, then you click on it, and that's it. So you have the, uh, what you get is something, is the actual um, graphical user interface running, as in this case, so you don't really need to do anything else. Um, uh, Java is required, is a prerequisite, but I think that you already have, you should already have Java installed because Java is, is everywhere. Um, so let's now try to see XQuery uh, in action. Um, how can we open uh, a document? So here, I, you should, can you read what I, I can read. Uh, let me see if in YouTube. Uh, I'm trying to enlarge as far as possible. Yes. Okay. This is for YouTube because in the handout is readable. Now is readable. Yeah. I'll send you. Be a little bit more clear. Yes. So, um, what we can do at the beginning, what we uh, wanted to do is simply to make the text. Uh, available within uh, this environment, because this is the first step. Um, uh, if we can actually uh, get the text uh, in the graphical user interface, we can then perform other actions, okay? Uh, we can actually open the document using a function, okay? In this case, in Xquery, we have the doc function. We just write doc, okay, parentheses. Then we put inside, inside it the, um, the path of uh, um, uh, the files, the, the, the path of the document within your, your system, okay? And then you simply click on this uh, green button. And as you can see, I actually got, I was able to open, in this case, the uh, um, Caesars uh, the Bello Civili. Okay, so I wrote the, the function and I put here uh, the path to the file, of course, uh, this value changes uh, um, uh, on the basis uh, of where you uh, put your, your file. Um, so, um, then, what can we, um, what can we do um, from now on? As you can see here, the TEI.2 element is the root element. If I now write something like slash TEI header, you see here, and then I click on run. Oops, there is, wait a second. Oh yes, <laughs> that's why what I need to do first is uh, to select the, uh, yeah, so I made uh, a mistake uh, um, because the, what, what I'm actually trying to do is going from one node, in this case, the doc function here represents the document node, and then I wanted to go to the 
child of the document node. And if you remember what I said before, okay, the outermost node is the child of the document node. In this case, the, um, the outermost node is the node TEI.2, okay? So that's why if I simply click on it, I get the TEI.2 element. If I then, if I wanted to go on, okay, and try to select, for example, the TE, the TEI header element, I simply, again, type TEI header here, and now you see the uh, result of this uh, um, XPath expression is actually the TEI header, which actually is the child of the TEI.2 element. And I could, of course, uh, go on here. I could also write file task. Uh, pay attention to the capital letters, okay? And again, what I get here is the file desk element, okay? Um, I think that uh, you, you, you might have noticed that XPath so far looks like navigating in a file system at the command line where you have folder and then you have have for the for the folders uh, uh, in it, and what you do actually is simply to go inside those folder and then select uh, folder uh, for, for folders. Um, but XPath is actually uh, offers a little more uh, much more. Um, so um, just to show you what happens uh, if we don't type, okay, in this case, again, I am selecting the TEI header. If I make a mistake here, and instead of writing the um, element in the right way, okay, instead of having the capital H, uh, I um, write the, uh, uh, not the capital one, and you see, I don't get anything because simply I made a mistake here. Okay, so this is simply to say that it is extremely important to um, read uh, and um, type the right name. If we have a capital letters, uh, we should keep them. But um, there are also other kinds of errors, like the one I did uh, earlier. Uh, if I, if instead of TEI header here, for example, I type title, okay, here, I don't get anything, okay? And that's right, why? Because this syntax, forward slash plus a noun, I think you should, um, you should uh, um, by now have understood that, that it means go from one parent to its child, right? And since title is not a child of the TEI.2 element here, because as you can see, title here is not a child of the TEI.2 elements, uh, because TEI header is, uh, is a child here, but not title. If I type title, I simply don't get anything because we could paraphrase the result as there is no title element which is a child of uh, the TEI.1 element, okay? But um, just to show you, what can I do if I wanted to select title elements without going through all the elements from one parent to another, uh, uh, to its child? I could use um, the what we in uh, XPath call axes. In this case, the descendant axis. So, you see, what I did uh, is not simply to type the name of, the, uh, of an element, but to specify um, the axis descendant, okay, because title is not a child of a TEI.2, but it is a descendant, right? Um, 
And by the way, I will get back to this uh, again, but this kind of, so writing this, for example, where I go from, again, parent to, ch uh, to, to his child, is an abbreviated syntax for this. Right? So, I can specify the axis every time I go from one node to another. If I don't specify any axis, okay, the processor understands that you want to select the child axis, okay? And so we should be, um, um, we should be aware that uh, if the element that we type is not, is not a child, we don't get anything. And in that case, we need to get back and select the right axis. In this case, again, for the title or for any other element. For example, let's select here in print. Again, this is a, a descendant element. Um, and, uh, oops, I made it descendant. Print. Wait a second. So, uh, in print, yes, I, again, there was an error on my part. In print, of course, with the M and not with the N, okay? And what if now from, what if we wanted to get from this element to its parents? What we can do is this, okay? Um, we can, again, select uh, specify an axis, in this case, the parent, because we are, for some reason, interested now in, uh, in the parent of the imprint element. And either, we, we have two options here. We can actually specify the name of the parent if we know it, or if we don't know it, we can use an asterisk here, which means uh, actually any element with any name, okay? The only important point here is that this uh, element should be the parent of the imprint one. So I click again on run and as you see now I get monograph and you can clearly see that monograph is actually the parent of the imprint. And I could go on, of course. Uh, um, again, what if I wanna, what, is, what if I wanna to for example, get back to the TEI 1.2 elements, I could simply say, I could simply use another, um, uh, another axis, which is the ancestor one. Okay, why? Because TEI, uh, TEI 2.2 is a clearly, is not the parent of a monograph, but it is an ancestor because TEI.2 is the outermost element, so any other element is uh, within it, and so it's clearly the ancestor of, of all any other elements. So if I do this, you see, I can easily um, get back to the uh, TEI2 elements. Hmm? What if I wanna, for example, to specify, um, uh, if I wanted to go, if I wanted to select this, the, the attribute uh, type of the TEI header. I can do that, again, using axis. I first need to go to the TEI header, in this case, since we are at this point of our XPath um, expression, we are at the uh, TEI.2 uh, um, element, so again, what we need to ask ourselves is what is the relationship between a TEI header and TEI.2. Uh, TEI header is a clearly um, um, a child, so in this case we can simply use the abbreviated syntax, which means that I can simply type the name of the element here, okay, again, TEI header, and then I could do something like this. I specify the axis attribute because I wanted to get to 
this to the type attribute and then I can specify the name of the attribute which is type and what I get is exactly the attributes. If I'm interested only in the content of the attribute, what I should do is to use a function in order to extract the content of the, uh, of the attribute. And I can do this um, typing data and putting a, um, a full stop inside it, which means uh, same, this means, uh, this is again uh, abbreviated syntax uh, and stands for the same node. It means uh, uh, actually uh, take the type attributes uh, and apply to it the data function. The data function, the job of the data function is to extract the text content of, uh, of an element or of an attribute. So if I do that and I click on uh, um, again, run, I get the content of, of, of these uh, attributes. Maybe what might be um, more interesting here, again, if I go on, what if I um, look at the text here, uh, what if I wanted to select, for example, the, uh, um, the book of, 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 this, uh, of this work? So what I can do again might be to simply, um, I could again go start with TEI.2 and then I could say, what if I say ancestor, ancestor here, colon, colon, and then I type div1, okay? Div1 because this is the name of the element I'm interested in uh, right now. Um, Oh, yes, this is not an ancestor, of course, this is a descendant. Right, so here we get the, uh, all the div1 attributes. You can see here on the right, top right here, and we get three, so the processor uh, tells us that we get three results, which means that there are three div1 elements of which are descendants of the tei.2 elements, okay? Um, what if I um, want to select at this point not all the books because, uh, um, of course, uh, before querying a text, uh, you, should, uh, you should have a, um, a careful look at the XML because you should understand the structure, okay, behind it. Um, in this case, I can tell you that the div1 elements are used in order to identify uh, the uh, books uh, uh, of, of the work. But we have, um, we, don't, we, we don't have just one book, we have uh, actually three books in this work. So what if I want to select, for example, the second book, so not um, not the, the three of the uh, all of the three books, but just uh, the second one. What I can do here is uh, use uh, um, uh, a construction uh, which is called uh, predicate uh, in its path, and it looks like this. So square brackets at the beginning, square brackets at the end, and then I type this attributes, again, I specify the axis. So since the, the attributes, uh, the N attributes are the ones uh, which seem to specify the number of the book, okay, what I can do is actually to uh, try to select, to use this information. One way to do that is, uh, again, via um, predicates. Now I will explain them in more details, but for now, um, wait a second. So I can, um, what's going on here? Okay, 
So um, I can uh, use, uh, um, I can specify, I can use something like this. Um, okay, so if I use the, if I wanted to use the axis, uh, I should say, I could use uh, this syntax where I say, okay, select, so the period means to select the the node, the, the, the same node, in this case, the div1, okay, because this is what we call the context node, and then we can go from here to the uh, attribute node n, which equals to two, okay? Or I can use, again, abbreviated syntax, uh, and I can simply use the at sign here, which is what usually people uh, do. And uh, again, what this means is that uh, select the div elements uh, uh, whose n attribute equals two, okay? Um, this construct, uh, this, uh, this, uh, um, the expression that I put within the, um, the square brackets is what we call, again, predicates. And you, you can think of this as uh, anything we write inside the square brackets evaluates to uh, a true or a false uh, um, value. If the value is true, I get the elements back. If the uh, element evaluates to, uh, if the expression evaluates to false, I don't get the um, the elements. the The expression doesn't return the elements. In this case, um, if if I if I wanted to um, uh, um, paraphrase uh, uh, this uh, expat expression, I would say that at this point, so uh, until div one the expat expression selects all the div1 elements, but then, thanks to this uh, uh, predicate, uh, I can select only the div1 elements uh, um, for which uh, the attributes n equals two, right? So since there are also other div1 elements whose, yes, there are other div1 elements, but the other two have an n attribute whose value is not true, is one and three, okay? So those two div1 elements are not returned by the expat expression, but only the ones for which the, um, the, uh, the expression within the predicate evaluates to true. Okay, so in this case, the actual div1, as you can see uh, here below, the div1 elements with the uh, two. Okay, um, so let's now switch to another document, the, uh, which is this one, to a tree banking file. Okay, and again, uh, uh, same procedure here. I put the links uh, um, in the wiki, GitHub wiki. So what you simply need to do is again to use the doc function. You download the text and then you put here the um, the path to your your uh, documents. Then you click run, and again you get the actual the actual file here. Um, so before um, before you go on again, it's really extremely important to have first a, a look at the XML files because it's difficult to navigate the uh, the XML file if you don't know the structure. In this case, um, uh, the structure of of this file is really. Uh, extremely easy, okay, because uh, we have a number of sentences, um, uh, more uh, specifically, we have uh, a sentence elements, and uh, each sentence element contains a number of word uh, elements which are specified for, again, a number of attributes. Uh, 
um, which attributes uh, uh, say something, okay, describe uh, the word. Um, again, um, this is really very intuitive. The ID attribute is the um, specifies the position of the word within the sentence. Uh, the form contains uh, the uh, the actual word form of the word. The lemma contains the lemma. The part of speech tag. Uh, I will talk about this uh, in a moment. Contains the morphological information. Then we have a relation which specify the syntactic relation of this word um, in this uh, sentence with respect to its head, which is the uh, the head uh, um, attributes contains the number of the uh, of the word which is the governor which is the linguistic governor of this word okay so uh, the quo uh, the word quo okay in this case uh, depends uh, according to this annotation to um, to the word with ID number four okay so the structure is extremely easy because you you have an entire file with simply um, um, a number of sentence uh, sentence elements and then within them we have a number of word elements. So um, uh, what if, again, what if, for example, I would like to query my text and find all the sentences which contain the, uh, uh, which contains Catilina, okay, somehow, probably uh, we need, you know, since we, um, we are, uh, we have Latin, you know, uh, Latin uh, has inflections, so we could have Catilina, Catiline, uh, Catilinae, Catilinam, and so on. In this case, um, it is extremely useful to know that we could use the uh, lemma attributes in order to um, spot all the occurrences uh, of uh, Catilina, no matter uh, no matter which uh, which word form uh, the uh, Catilinas uh, actually has. Again, if uh, whether it's uh, the nominative or the accusative. Okay. Um, what I can so how I can do that again. Um, one way to do this is uh, to actually first select all the sentences here. Again, uh, you should ask yourself, uh, uh, how can I go from the document node uh, to the sentence? Mm -hmm. One way is again to use the uh, descendant, um, the descendant uh, axis. You see? At this point, anything else um, has disappeared and we just have the sentence elements. I should also say that we actually have, uh, again, abbreviated syntax uh, uh, to in order to uh, um, specify the descendant uh, axis. And this is, uh, this can be, um, um, uh, gotten by using double uh, forward slash, okay? If you type forward slash, forward slash, what the processor understands is that you mean uh, uh, descendants, okay? Um, and as you see, if I click on run, uh, I actually get the all the sentences elements, but this is not really um, this is just the first step because now I would like to select right all these sentences which contains the uh, which contains Catalina. Okay, this could be done if you um, remember what I uh, what I said about uh, about predicate using a predicate here because um, the sentence has word so the underlying logic here should be um, how can so give me all the sentences and uh, one of the word um, within the sentence should have a lemma attribute which equals to Catilina, Catilina 1 to be more precise because this is the way uh, we have lemmas here. Okay, this is uh, another question, but you just have to look at what we encoded and uh, because this is the formal basis, okay? 
So what we can do, for example, is to type something like this. You see, the query runs, I got 46 results, okay? And what I actually did, okay, I tried to separate uh, the brackets, uh, hoping that this uh, might make things uh, a little bit more clear. So what I said is that um, I wanted to select a sentence, okay, a sentence for which there is a word, if I go from, again, dot means the um, the context node, in this case a sentence, and then I go from the sentence to word, okay, and the word, again, I have another attribute, should have a lemma, which equals uh, Catalina1, okay? So if everything inside my predicate is true, I got the sentence back. Okay, and this is actually what I uh, what I actually uh, wanted to uh, to select here, right? And uh, if you don't believe me, okay, as you can see here in the results below, you see the first sentence has Catalina here, the second here again, the third sentence has Catalina again, but this is correct. The fourth Catalina again, and so on. Here another. Uh, Catalina and so on. So what I actually was able to do is to again select all sentences um, which have a word element whose lemma um, attribute equals Catalina one. Okay, and again we we are we have so far just used an XPath um, expression. Uh, what if, what if I wanted to present, for example, my results to someone who doesn't really like XML and doesn't know anything about XML and would simply like to have the text of the sentence, right? Because yes, we can, um, we are kind of uh, technology savvy and we, we know that we could uh, reconstruct the sentence by just by reading uh, uh, the uh, content of the form uh, um, of the form uh, uh, attributes, quo, usque, tandem, blah, 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 okay, and we actually get, uh, we, we get the sentence, right? But what if we wanted to have another output, a, a more clear output, I, I would say? This is where XQuery is extremely uh, useful. And I put here, I have already written the query here, and that now I will try to explain it um, step by step. So here we actually have the simply the XPath expression, okay? So this is what we have, uh, uh, we have so far seen. What I can do right now is actually to instruct the, uh, the processor to pick, um, pick up all the sentences one by one and actually do something with each sentence, okay? Um, in computational terms, uh, this can be achieved by using a for clause here. I mean, for dollar $R, this is, this is what we call a variable, which means uh, I am doing a repetition on uh, all the sentences that I got, that I previously got, do you remember all the sentences? So what this means is actually uh, make a repetition on all the sentences and each sentence and associate each sentence to this variable, okay? So it's like call it dollar $R. And then return, this is pretty clear, the, uh, the, the syntax. So what I want is to get the, for example, now I'm simplifying, then I will get back to this. I could simply say this. If I say, um, if I simply 
right this i got what i got before right so um no real improvement but then i can go on from dollar r and write something like this okay remember that the dollar r is the sentence okay because the dollar r is associated to each sentence here so what i can do is go from the sentence to the word again this is an expat expression from the parent to the uh, to the of the children or word uh, children here and then i could say select the uh, form of of the word elements and if i do this you know here i just got all the form elements um or, or the four sorry or, or, or all the four attributes of each word element okay since this is of course uh, um, an ugly output usually what we want is not the name of the attribute but just the content of the attributes so we could do this data again a period here and uh, okay and in this case i got just a list of the word okay but this is not really what uh, probably we wanted to show um now what we would like actually to have is to uh, clearly identify the sentence right and this is not that easy uh if we just uh, go through uh, this list okay what we can do at this point is to actually build uh, an element here um, for example we, we can call it s it doesn't matter we can call it uh, however uh, we um, we want okay so this is we are building an element here and then we put the x path expression inside it but in order uh, um, to instruct the processor that this is actually an XPath expression, it is not just pure text because what I get if I simply um, keep this, uh, this query, you see, I just get a number of sentence elements where uh, $R blah, 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 is treated simply as a string, okay, as a, um, is a, as a string, okay, but this is not really what we want here right we we wanted to by writing this uh, uh, we mean an x path expression that we expect to evaluate to something so in order to do that we need to oops, we need to add further brackets here curly brackets and if i add curly brackets wow now we can actually read uh, the sentences and uh, as you can see here because they the uh, catalina is uh, highlighted here we actually got all the sentences only the sentences which contain the uh um, a word form for catalina okay no matter again uh, which word form uh, it is because we uh, we have a tree bank so we are happy um, to use the lemma so we don't care about um about the word form but we get it i would say for free okay and uh, again here we got um i would say a clear output because uh, each sentence element here identifies um, a sentence uh, in which uh, we find uh, Catalina okay so and we we do that using again not only X path but also X query because uh, we can use a for loop we call this so this is a for clause uh, um, enabling us to have a for loop over uh, the uh, output of the uh, of this XPath uh, expression, um, we can do that um, because we are using uh, uh, XQuery. Okay, so we could say that um, XPath is a simply a component, an extremely important 
um, components in XQuery and the XQuery is built on the top of it or um, uh, incorporates it, uh, it. But of course, it's, uh, uh, it's a kind of a, um, a superset, okay? So we can do uh, more things with, with XQuery, but if you know XPath, which by the way is a technology that you can also use in XSLT, uh, for example, um, you can easily you, you can easily write um, XQuery um, uh, XQuery scripts. Okay, so um, but let's get back again uh, at our document. Um, because now I would like to do something more. Okay, so this is again our underlying document. And what now I would like to do, for example, is to, um, I am a linguist, and so I, for example, I would like to find all the sentences where I find the preposition whom. As you know, in Latin, whom can be a conjunction or a preposition. If I don't have uh, a tree bank, um, if, if I simply have a bare text, it might be a little bit tricky to identify where uh, whom is a preposition or where um, it is a conjunction. But with a tree bank, this is pretty easy. Why? Because I can simply rely on the part of speech tag and uh, um, because the part of speech tag contains this information so we can distinguish when uh, the word is, uh, is a preposition or um, is a conjunction. Um, to do that I can uh, slightly modify for example the, the query that we um, uh, wrote for uh, uh, to find uh, um, sentences with Catalina and for example, instead of uh, instead of having uh, uh, well, we could we could substitute here Catalina with, for example, the word uh, whom here. Okay, and uh, at this point, what I get are not the sentences, uh, not all the sentences where we have Catalina, it might be that Catalina is sometimes in a sentence, but here the query is looking for all the sentences containing a word whose lemma is um, whom one, okay? And uh, um, again, you can easily, so I can highlight again this, so as you can see here in below in the results, um, each sentence element, uh, which corresponds to a sentence, um, contains, uh, it contains a word form which is whom, which of course could be a preposition or uh, could be um, a conjunction, okay? At this point, we cannot distinguish. What we should do at this point is to refine our query in order to um, uh, select only the um, uh, sentences where cum is a preposition, okay, is not a conjunction. And this could be done just, uh, um, it would be interesting to know uh, how you think we could do that, but I can give you now the solution. I could actually add something at this point. So the word I'm looking for should not only have a lemma which equals uh, one, but should also have a particular um, post tag. And I can tell you here uh, that the post tag uh, which identifies a preposition looks like this. Okay, for a second. So if if cum is a preposition, I will find a post tag which looks like this. We have an R at the beginning, which means this is a preposition. Okay. And now the only problem here is to understand how I can combine in terms of, uh, uh, of writing my, my query, how, how I can combine, uh, how, uh, how I can insert uh, this uh, um, further um, uh, specification within the, uh, the query. 
and the this could be done this can be done doing this again um, I try to explain the logic so we could read this as select all the sentences again and this sentence should have a word as its child uh, and the 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 word the word um, element should have an, an attributes the at sign means the attributes lemma which equals to kum one and at the same time we wanna its post tag attributes to equals uh, uh, r minus hyphen minus hyphen minus blah 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 okay so if now i you see i click on run and what i actually get are only the sentences where cum is a preposition let's see cum liberis yeah uh, cum magna calamitate here again um, so it looks like uh, the the cum should be should be prepositions okay and this is uh, uh, and this happens because again we have specified this uh, um, via the um, using relying um, on the information provided by the post tag uh, um, attributes okay so um i just wanted to uh, also show you uh so getting back to my presentation here um so these are simply the abbreviated syntax i just try to um mention uh, uh, a few points here okay but um you have a slide here you can Play around. Um, this is the um, a slide for the uh, flower expression, which is the uh, I would say the main uh, expression uh, for when you uh, when you write an uh, query script. Uh, you um, you will find at least a one for clause, I'd say, or a let clause plus a return clause, as we saw in in our uh, in our example. Um, here, I can just really briefly mention it because there is not really much time. But uh, what so flower expression stands for uh, for for clause, let clause, order clause, where clause, return clause. So it's it's an acronym, and it means that I can actually um, write a query where I can use uh, uh, all of these clauses. Okay, each of it has some some meaning. Uh, the for clause is as as I have already said um, is helpful in order to make a repetition uh, over a set, okay? Uh, the return clause is uh, clearly useful because I wanna um, the results uh, of, in this case, uh, uh, of the repetition. So I start with the variable here and then I repeat the variable here, okay? Um, what I could do, uh, I could also rewrite this query uh, by using a let clause uh, doing this um, so instead of having so i delete here everything okay so the four clause let's again try to read and understand what i'm doing so i'm doing a repetition over all the sentence elements and the sentence elements are the ones which are selected thanks to the xpath expression okay so this is first evaluated then we have a repetition here and then the let clause allows me to specify another variable um, which might be this one for example i could say okay now you can go from the sentence 
to the word element. So instead of putting this here, I can use a let clause to say, right, go from the dollar $R, again, dollar $R is each sentence, okay? You have to think of this as dollar $R means each single sentence. From each single sentence, I go to the word level and this word, um, uh, word element and each word element and the only word elements that I wanna are the ones where the lemma attribute equals one and the post tag attribute equals to this string, right? Um, I can do that. Um, if I don't do anything else, uh, um, what I have um, written so far is, uh, uh, what I have added is uh, simply a new variable, but XQuery won't consider it uh, for the results if I don't uh, clearly state uh, somewhere, and we will we'll see now how, that I want this let clause to be true. The content of this let clause should be true, okay? Because we, again, we, we don't simply want all the sentences, but we want the sentences um, uh, where there is at least one word uh, with these characteristics. Again, if I simply run, I get all the sentences here, because as I was saying, the let clause simply um, um, allows me to uh, declare a variable full stop. If I wanted to use uh, this variable, I should uh, actually put it somewhere else. And this is where the where clause um, comes into play, because the where clause allows me to say, I want, this means, again, if I uh, can paraphrase this, uh, um, this means that the let clause should be true where dollar um, y okay double y so um if now i run my query you see i just got i just got 13 results okay i mean i get only again only the results where the um only the sentences where we have a cum has a preposition. And this is because we, we specify that uh, we wanna the let clause to be true, okay? Where means uh, is, is actually a clause uh, um, uh, where I can, I can specify if I want a certain variable um, to be true or to be false. If I, for example, right bits where not my variable right so i get i get all of the sentences where there is not a word which contains a lemma cum which is a preposition okay because this negates okay um uh, uh, negates the variable so for class let clause, word clause, return clause. Um, if I, this is what we find here, okay, for clause again makes a repetition over a set and select each item singularly. Let clause declares uh, a given uh, variable, sorry for the mistake here. Um, the order clause of which I have not uh, treated uh, uh, here um, uh, allows me to kind of specify the order of, of the, um, um, in, in, in our case, of the sentences. We can specify in which order we want the sentence, uh, the S elements to be returned. The word clause evaluates to uh, a Boolean value, so we can we can specify if we want a, a given variable to be true or to be false, and then we simply have uh, the return clause uh, in order to get the results uh, back. Okay. 
And finally, before um, this is really the last uh, slide, uh, um, I uh, do really have much time, but you should know that uh, XQuery is, uh, is a functional language, okay? Uh, which means that uh, we usually have a function um, for everything. Okay, so if you if you have a question, we probably have in each query a function in order to um, get what you want. Uh, for example, um, one um, very useful uh, function is the matches function. Um, here, matches functions uh, allows me to verify if a given string, for example, in this case, uh, uh, Cicero, okay, um, matches, actually matches uh, um, certain, um, certain characters or a sequence of characters. For example, if I write here as, uh, uh, as the second argument I see, and then I um, click on uh, um, the run button, I got as a result true. Yeah, because that's true, okay, EC is a contained in uh, Cicero, okay, so this matches uh, um, uh, the, my string Cicero. Of course, if I write something like uh, uh, IG and then, and then I press again run, I get false because I don't have an IG sequence in, in my string. Um, why I'm showing you this? Because this might be, this function can be extremely useful, for example, if you wanted to work on the, um, on this, uh, on this string, because uh, um, in uh, uh, the part of speech attributes um, contains a string where each character actually um, means, uh, means something uh, specific, okay? So, uh, for example, this may be uh, a verb, the third, the third um, sorry, this is a verb, okay? So the first character is the part of speech, and then we have uh, that the second, the second character specifies uh, the person, uh, then we have uh, the number, and then so, and so on. So each, each character in, in the string has a particular meaning. Of course, it's, it's not, um, uh, I cannot uh, here explain this, but you have a full documentation um, for these, uh, for these uh, values uh, in our GitHub repository. The point here is from the perspective of, uh, of a query in a, um, a text, and what I'm saying is that we can actually use the matches function in order to match a particular uh, a particular uh, part of speech tag. Okay, for example, um, if we get back to um, to our previous, this was our right. So I could also I could say, okay, give me um, for a second, give me all the word whose attribute post tag is uh, we wanted to for example select uh, the verbs uh, which are uh, in the third singular person for example of course i cannot really actually do that just using uh, um, a simple comparison expression like this because i wanted to specify that this should be a V, okay, okay. Well, in this case, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty um, easy because they are um, one next the other. Uh, but let's have another example. Um, get back to, for example, what if uh, I wanted to, um, I don't know, have uh, um, all the verb uh, with a singular person, and here we can get. Uh, I mean, the, the number should be singular, but the um, uh, person could be the first or the second or whatever. So in this case, what I can do is this. I get back to my um, to the previous query, and 
what I'm actually doing right now is I said that I want a verb, right? So be here. It should be singular. So the third place is where I can specify the number. And then the problem here is that I wanted to specify that the second value should be any value, not the hyphen minus. Because if I, if I just uh, uh, run the query um, as it is right now, I get a few sentences where the second, the second, um, uh, the second position of the attributes um, of the string is a, is an iPhone minus, uh, iPhone uh, minus. But what if I want not only uh, hyphen minus, uh, but any other character. What I can do here is uh, actually to use, uh, uh, okay, I just, uh, maybe quite interesting. Okay, I got here zero results, right? Why? Because in our tree banker, we always specify uh, the, the person, okay? So if I use a dot here, okay, um, I, oh, I don't get it, wait a second. So if I, if I simply specify, um, the number, I get, uh, the, um, all the verbs, which, which have, I mean, all the sentences, again, where I have a verb in the third singular person. And again, uh, even if, of course, this is just, uh, um, um, we could write a more detailed query uh, in, in order to also clearly identify uh, where um, the, the verb is in the sentence. Okay, so now I'm not really modifying anything uh, to keep things simple, but uh, even if you just have a quick look here, you can actually see that there are, um, each sentence has a, a verb, yaktabit, uh, vivit, uh, and so on. Each sentence has a, a verb at the third singular person. And what I'm doing here is using the matches functions whose output can equals to true or false. The, the idea again is after each word element is selected, if for any given word, uh, the post tag, the, the, the output of this function is true, and we know that the matches function can um, returns a value which is true or false uh, um, on the basis uh, of the fact that a given string uh, here um, matches uh, what we find in uh, um, in this case in the post tag attribute. Uh, so if if this um, if this function returns a true value, I will get back. I will get the sentence back. Otherwise, I won't. Uh, I won't. Okay. So um, this is a, um, a very simple example to show how we can use a, um, a function within a query. I know the uh, the of course uh, the, the topic is is a quite complex. I just wanted to extremely uh, very very briefly uh, introduce uh, the, the the topic, and then I hope that any one of you can uh, um, uh, read more if, if you are interested uh, in that. And I, I would say that I don't really have uh, much to add because we are, uh, I think, a little bit late uh, now. So that's it on my part. No problem, Giuseppe. Thank you very much for I need you one second. Thank you very much for this very detailed presentation. So I think that this is, uh, well, this is of course a, a complex uh, a topic, but uh, thanks to your slides and the screens, really, we could see a, ve a very detailed um, presentation. Uh, yes, our time is over, but I don't know if there are questions. We have people in the Hangout, if you have questions. One or three minutes. 
Well, of course, uh, the topic is, uh, <laughs> uh, well, important. And, uh, and in, the, in GitHub, uh, you have the class outline uh, with um, a clear description, uh, activities, reading, so you can try to use these tools. Maybe one thing, Giuseppe, uh, at the beginning you explained XML and uh, we have seen uh, this document. So I think I'm saying an obvious thing, but this is what uh, we have been discussing a lot. So the important thing is to have good data and first of all, to have good XML. So this is uh, important, so to learn how to produce good XML to be able then to extract information using these tools. Yes, and is right is writing in the chat. Uh, yes, I will have to practice a little before having questions. Uh, yes, yes, of course, because it was very detailed, very precise, but definitely um, we have to try. I don't know, Giuseppe, if you want to say something because you are muted and I can't unmute you. Giuseppe, are you still there? But you are muted. Okay, yes. I, yes. I just wanted to add a very brief uh, thing. Uh, so getting back to, uh, to the grid that I showed, I just wanted to tell you that if I put verb dot, uh, which means that this dot again is a, uh, means uh, any any uh, character and then s uh, and then I press run I get all the word uh, whose post tag it contains uh, uh, starts with a verb and then have any characters as as its second character then it's a singular okay so this is a regular expression um, and I know that uh, um, someone else has talked about regular expression and I thought that this was interesting to uh, let you know how you can actually reuse uh, um, uh, uh, pieces of knowledge uh, um, in uh, other uh, domains uh, because what you have seen for Ines uh, can um, partly be used also in uh, in Xquery because the regular expressions are everywhere and this again was just a, a very um, easy example to to show how we can combine uh, functions uh, and uh, XPath within an XQuery script, but I, I know that the, the topic is a complex and you actually need to practice. But I, again, I hope that you can at least start playing around with all of this uh, and that maybe um, in a few months uh, you, um, you, can, uh, um, you, you can query your, um, your documents. Yeah, that's, that's it uh, um, on, on my side. Giuseppe, thank you. Yes, practice and then, as I said, uh, preparing good data and good... Yes, data. absolutely. 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 Yeah. So otherwise, you don't know what you are querying or you're getting wrong results. So uh, this is, of course, if you're right, because you need good data and once you, you have them and you know their structure, then you can start querying. But if you don't have good data, of course, um, it makes not much much sense or you will get dirty results so yeah. yeah okay excellent thank you very much really now I have to stop broadcasting but we will meet again next week and we have next week another session about translation alignment so um, another uh, interesting topic in some way also connected to, to this topic. So thank you very much for your participation. Thank you, Giuseppe. Yes, for your contribution. And see you next week and good night. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.